on everybody welcome back to my channel it's your favorite auntie moby i'm back for another episode review of pose this is season two episode six loves in need of love today before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all i love this episode of pose i'm a huge fan of cabarets and and you know the the the, the singing in the movies and things like that I'm a huge fan of it. That's what this episode gave us. I loved it. And um, let's get right into the review, y'all. Y'all, so it is the night of the ball, right? And so the category is back to the future, like futuristic, take it to 2015, right? So it's crazy back then. This is what, like 1990 or 1980, or whatever. It's crazy that back then, to them in 2015, like everybody's dressed in like robot uniforms and all this crazy jets and futuristic shit. It's crazy that back then we thought that by now we would be in these spaceships and in these flying and in flying cars and all that. I remember in elementary school they promised us that we was gonna have a flying car too. I'm still waiting on my goddamn flying car. I've been waiting on that since I was what five, six, seven years old. I'm 39. Where is it at? I'm still waiting on that, right? So as Pray Tell is announcing what's going on at the ball or whatever, right? He's calling the categories. You can see something is kind of off with him. You can't really tell what it is. He's sweating profusely. He's kind of slurred a little bit. And you can just kind of see, look at him and see something is not right with him, right? He keeps on trying to announce everything. And as he's trying to announce everything, he's trying to tell everybody, you know, about the AIDS cabaret that's coming up. Block is on the floor selling tickets. And so Blanca can even see from out there on, you know, with him being on the stage, her being out there in the crowd she could even see like wait a minute something going on with pray tell something isn't right right next thing you know bitch he collapses hits the flow passes out block runs over there oh my god pray tell what the fuck happened right so next thing you know, he wakes up, he comes to, he's in the hospital, Nurse Judy and Blanc is there. The doctor comes in and the doctor's been asking him like, you know, what's been going on? How have you been feeling? You know, what are these bruises all over you? Nurse Judy's trying to take his blood pressure. He's saying that he's in so much pain, she can't even get the blood pressure cuff good on his arm. She done tried to change the cuff out and everything, didn't know what the hell it was. Then the doctor again asking him about all this bruising that he's having on him. He was like, I don't know, they just popping up, but it doesn't hurt. So they asking him like, are you having normal? bowel movements this and the other he's like no my shit ain't been right since i started taking this damn azt now he was like had it not been you know the medicine you know whatever's going on i would say that it would be the progression of aids but i would say that this is a side effect from the azt that you've been taking right immediately pray tell gets pissed he gives blanca and nurse judy the look of death because you know he did not want to take that in the first place but blanca and nurse judy were the ones that talked him into taking that so instantly he's pissed about it and um, he, he like, they try to comfort him, right? They're like, well, you know, don't worry about it, pray tell. You know, because the doctor tells him, don't take that medicine no more because you already having bad side effects from it, so don't take it no more, right? And so... Blanca is like, you know, pray tell, we're going to be there for you. Don't worry about it. You know, we're going to take care of you. We're going to try to flush it out your system. And Nurse Judy is like, well, you know, it, 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 you knew that there was a risk too, but don't worry about it. We're going to be here. He's like, look, I understand that, you know, whatever's going on is whatever's going on, but don't pity me right now. Don't try to coddle me right now. Can I just have a fucking hissy fit, please? And I get him, you know, he... If you get news like that and going through whatever he's going through right now, already dealing with being HIV positive, then he gets this news that he's having these side effects from these meds. I don't want to hear that shit. Just let me be in my feelings for a minute. And that's what he was telling Blanca and Nurse Judy. Just get the fuck out. Let me be in my feelings for a minute and I get back to you. Blanca's in her shopping hole. Bitch ass landlord Miss New uh, Miss Norton comes in there or whatever. Right before she comes in, she sees on the front of Blanca's window or whatever that she got flyers up for the AIDS cabaret. She come in and she snatched a flyer down. She was like, why are you still here? Black like, bitch, why are you still coming in here? Yes, I'm still gonna be here. She was like, I still want you gone. I still want you out. And she was like, why would you even have this up in your window? Wouldn't you be worried about people seeing this? Worried about if you sterilize an instrument 
picture me. You sterilize it. And she's like, bitch, I got a sterilized machine in the back. You want to see it? She was like, you know what? Here, here's $20 to donate to the cabaret or whatever. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? I might give you a better donation. Matter of fact, I'm going to come there and I'm going to sing at your goddamn shit. She goes and snatches her little $20 back up after her, uh, out of her hand. Then tells Blanca to go ahead and put the signs back up in the window. Maybe that's going to get you out of here faster. She's such a bitch. Oh, I don't like her little old ass. She got my goddamn nerves, girl. So, pray tell is in the hospital, right? He has a new roommate. His roommate's name is Lewis, right? So, pray tell is talking to his roommate. He was like, don't I know you? I know I know you, right? And he was like, I don't know. Maybe you know me because I used to work at Posh or, you know, something like that. He said or whatever, right? And pray tell was like, have you been down to the balls? And he was like, gosh, no. And pray tell was like, oh, so he's a bougie queen. Baby Lewis looked over at him. He was like, I'm a college educated man. I am not a queen. Baby, he quickly gathered Pray Tell together. He fixed his little old crown. And later on from that, baby, he ended up going on to glory. He started coughing up and shit. Pray Tell was in the bed next to him. Pray Tell was like, you want me to call a nurse? Next thing you know, Lewis started convulsing and shit. Turns out he's having a heart attack, girl. Pray, Pray Tell starts freaking out. He in the background yelling, talking about, it's the medicine, it's the medicine. He started freaking out to the point to where they got to sedate his ass. As they sedate him, put him out, girl, he laid up in the bed, zonked the fuck out, right? Next thing you know, as he wakes up, he sees flowers and shit all around him. He reads one of the cards, and it was like, oh, pray tell, why don't you just, when are you going to die and come and see me so I can have some company, love candy? He see that card, he's like, oh, shit, no. He throw that shit out, right? He gets another card, it's like, XOXO, love candy. He throw that card down, too, he freaking the fuck out. He hears a lighter flick, pulls that curtain back, next thing you know, it's Miss Candy, bitch. She's sitting on the roommate's bed, because mind you, the roommate dead and gone. Miss Candy is snatched and she is put together. Makeup is flawless, hair look good, dresses popping or whatever, right? And um, Pray Tell is like, uh, what the, what, what, what the fuck is you? What are you doing here? She's like, um, you know, I'm up in, um, you know, I'm having a good time. I'm hanging with uh, Liberace and I think she said Perry Ellis is and the other. Basically, she said her having it. She's up in there. She's hanging out with everybody who's died from AIDS. She's saying that, you know, they can understand her. Pray tell us, like, what you mean they can understand you? Ken, did you have AIDS? That moment we find out that, yes, Candy did have AIDS. She said she was careful with her tricks and all of that, but she hid it and she hid it well. Basically, what she's there for, she sees the pills that the roommate left, right? She's trying to get Pray Tell to take these pills to kill itself. It's real weird. It's kind of like she's the angel of death. She's trying to seduce him into taking these pills. She's like, you feeling how you feeling now? But if you take these pills, just a handful of them, next thing you know, you'll wake up, you'll be riding your bike on the side of the lake. It'll just be so nice and so serene. Pray tell like, oh, hell to the no, no, no. I ain't finna do that. So he throw them goddamn shits down. Next thing you know, Candy disappears, right? He wakes up again, and he hears this noise, like, bam, 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 like this alarm or whatever going off, right? So he gets up, he looks around. Next thing you know, he sees some flashlights flashing on him. It's a power outage, power outage in the hospital, right? So they walk him back to his bed. He's laying down there, just chilling. Then next thing you know, he hears this man humming. It's this man that's sitting, you know, laying at the foot of his, I know, sitting at the foot of his bed. Next thing you know, Pray Tell is like, don't hum that song. And the guy's like, well, you would always relax when I would hum that song to you. Pray Tell was like, yep, and what did she do after I relaxed? She would creep up in my bed like a thief in the night. I wasn't number 12 years old. Turns out it's his stepfather, his stepfather that used to molest him. His stepdaddy gonna have a nerve to say, you seduced me. He was like, what? You know what? I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't going to forgive you for you. I'm going to forgive you for me. His stepdaddy going to say, we always argue, and the only time we didn't argue was at my funeral. You just sat there so quiet and so relaxed. Like, and then start to, why is he seeing dead people? First, I'm like, okay, maybe he's hallucinating this from the drug or something like that. But do, do Pray Tell got a sixth sense that we don't know about? I don't know. But, um... So, he starts yelling like, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. Next thing you know, his stepdaddy disappears, right? Then, he sees his 
partner, Constance. It was good to see Constance, right? Constance is telling him, no, baby, you can't be sitting over here soaking in this bed. You got to get up. You got people that's waiting on you. They waiting to see you perform. And Constance is like, no, he's telling Constance, he's like, well, I'm just not ready. You know, I, I miss you. I love you. He's like, I love you too, but I'm always going to be right here. But it's not your time. We're not ready for you. So, Pray Tell starts walking down the hallway, right? He's come back. He looks at Constance. He's like, I love you, and I'm always going to be here. Next thing you know, the camera turns back and looks at Pray Tell, and Pray Tell is dressed to the nines with a tuxedo on with a long train. Now, right there is when I started to get a little bit of motherfucking anxiety because I was thinking like, oh, God, oh, man, does this mean Pray Tell is dead? Because, you know, that's what happened with Miss Candy. She was dressed to the nines. And next thing you know, you know, she did her little last dance or whatever. And she was dead. But, you know, she remained dead because she coming back and she haunting on Pray Tell's ass. So, I thought that's what was going on with Pray Tell. I was like, oh, bitch, no. Don't kill Pray Tell. Lord, my heart can't take it. So, he's um, walking down the hallway and, um, you know, he's singing his song. Like I said, he starts performing um i think it's called the man that got away and he's performing to all the men that have died in that hospital from hiv and aids related deaths it was so it was beautiful but it was so sad that's the first time i started crying started crying real tears because everybody you know in the audience was sick because you know these were the people that had died from aids like i said complication from aids and hiv and he was there performing for them you know it was just it was it was beautiful Next thing you know, Nurse Judy is calling his name like, pray, pray. He wakes up and he's like, oh my God, he's in a room in the hospital and nobody's there. It's just him. He's like, oh shit, like am I losing my mind? Like what's going on? And again, I think he was hallucinating from the tranquilizer that they gave him. I don't know if they gave his ass a horse tranquilizer or what they gave him, but I think he was hallucinating from that. That's That was just my opinion. That's what I thought. Y'all, this is another part that made me cry. Blanca feels guilty that pray tell is sick because you know again her and nurse judy talked to him about basically talked him into taking that medication and so she's trying to plan the cabaret because now that he's sick she told pray tell i'll take over the cabaret for you don't worry about it i got this she's trying to call people trying to get people to perform and it's hard and she's stressed out trying to do that alone as well as carrying the burden of her feeling like she's the reason that pray tell is in a situation that he's in right now when he's sick and in the hospital but luckily she had angel there her dwarf that helped to comfort her and let her know that you know can't nobody tell pray tell what to do not even you can tell him what to do so it's not your fault that he's sick right now you know it's that that was just God's plan so I was glad that Blanca was there to, to you know to comfort her make her feel good or whatever right so it's the night of the cabaret right Nurse Judy come in with her little sequence gown on looking like a whole fucking million dollar buck. She looks so damn good or whatever, right? So she goes to Blanca and, you know, Blanca's like, where's Pray Tell at? And um, she's like, well, you know, he's he's pissed off. He ain't coming. Blanca get pissed off, go down there to Pray Tell room and she's like, oh, motherfucker, what is you doing? You need to get your ass up. You got people out here waiting on you, waiting to see you. He like, as long as you're going to be there? She's like, yes, I'm going to be there. He's like, well, no, fuck you. I ain't going. And she's like, you better get your ass up because I was just like you looking for somebody else to blame because my my ass is sick. It don't work like that, okay? You need to suck it up, learn how to deal with this, but you got other people that's waiting on you and they waiting to see your ass. Pray tell like, fuck you. Mark say, fuck you. They kind of gave each other, you know, each other a little look or whatever. She like, get your ass up so you don't smell like no old man. He like, bitch, excuse me. She said, the show starts in 10 minutes. In other words, get your ass up, nigga. It is lights, camera, action. Y'all, so Nurse Judy performs, right? She got Lulu, Damon, and Ricky as her backup singers. I looked, I was like, oh, Damon and Ricky, they sing too. Oh, they the total motherfucking package. How about that? So she performs. She does good as hell. Next thing you know, Ner um, Miss Norton, Frederica. Frederica is her name with her racist ass. Frederica Norton, she performs, and bitch, mama did that. She did that. She performed her ass off. Gave Blanca a $100 donation, cash, and all that, right? After she performs, she says, I got to go outside and make a phone call real quick, right? Blanca's like, oh, you know, everybody loving her and shit, because she did that. She performed her ass off. She goes outside, calls her son, who's at the same damn time over there at Blanca's shop, gutting it, boarding it up. She says, hurry up. 
Cause I, I want that shit gone. I want her ass out of there. He's like, look, we gonna need about a whole nother hour. She's like, don't worry about it. I got it. You just make sure you taking everything out of there and you boarding it up. So this whole time, this bitch being over here sneaky, like she trying to be cool with them. When really she was over here plotting the whole motherfucking time. Oh, sneaky ass bitch. Oh, she, mm. So y'all, Electra Abundance performs. She sounded very unique. We're just going to say that, y'all. I'm not even going to say that about that. Um, Blanca gets ready to perform. She comes up and she announces that they made over $4,000 in donations, which is yay. You know, great kudos to them. And she tells them that she wants them to know what the face of HIV looks like. And she announces to them that she's been living with HIV herself. Nobody knew that but her kids and pray tell and nurse judy so she came out to everybody let everybody know then she starts to perform pray tell finally emerges and comes out and she makes him get his ass up and sing they sing loves in need of love today and that's a stevie wonder song um y'all they sung that song beautifully i love billy porter's voice of i've now listen, I've been a fan of Billy Porter's. I, he was on, I actually fell in love with him when he was on um, Law & Order SVU one episode. First time I seen him, it was my first time ever seeing him and I've been a fan of his ever since. His voice is beautiful. Now Blanca, Blanca has a beautiful voice, but when I first seen her getting ready to sing, Blanca is very fish. She's very beautiful. So I'm thinking I'm going to hear me maybe a soprano, a strong alto. Baby, when she came with that deep tenor, I was not expecting that at all. It was damn near a bass. She kind of had the Tony Braxton thing going on. Like she had a deepness, like a deepness to it. I was like, damn. All right, Mother Blanca, you do your damn thing. I was not expecting that, though. Beautiful song. But again, I was not expecting the bass. You know, whatever, right? So, after the show or the cabaret is over, Miss Norton comes up to Blanca. And she's like, so you put this whole cabaret on by yourself? And she's like, yep, I sure did, all by myself. She's like, well, I'd like to sit down some more and talk with you about it. Blanca, like, come by my shop tomorrow. I'll give you a free mani and petty. She's like, ooh, tomorrow won't work for me. How about tonight? All right, cool. She was like, cool, I'll take you for dessert. She was like, well, bitch, as long as you paying, I want a full course meal. All right, cool. I got all the time in the world. They go out to eat. Next thing, next day, Blanca goes to her shop, see the shit is boarded up Blanca like that old sneaky ass bitch. Blanca that night, you know, is dinner or whatever at the house of Evangelista. And so Blanca's telling them everything that fucking happened. Blanca like, look, this bitch done boarded up my shit. We got to get this hoe. So Blanca's going to stage um, a protest. But before that happens, Pray Tell is back at home and Pray Tell complaining about the food. Y'all, yeah, my bad leg was itching. Pray tell over there complaining about the food or whatever. So they tell Pray tell, look, we putting you on a butter diet. They make his ass spaghetti with extra butter and some croissant rolls or whatever with extra butter because, you know, he was all on that butter trip. He was eating a, a gallon of butter a day because he heard that that helped fight HIV and AIDS. And so that, you know, warmed his heart or whatever. So like I said, Blanca is protest, uh, planning a protest, right? So she wants to go in front of her shop first. It's just her, Pray Tell, and the kids, right? And so next thing you know, Pray Tell was like, um, Blanca was first. She was like, you know, it wasn't a big turnout, yada, yada, yada. Pray Tell was like, that's why I call for backup, baby. She looks to her right, looks to her left. All of them coming down the street. A crook, a crook. Frederica is a crook. They all got their signs. They out there protesting. There's about a hundred some people out there in front of Blanca's shop, right? Next thing you know, Miss Norton come rolling down the street. She pulls up in front of the shop. She see all of them. Now she rolled down her window, make eye contact with Blanca. She's like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, you crooked ass bitch. Cause she already know she finna have to deal with their ass. She wasn't bargaining for that. So Pray Tell is getting ready for bed that night. He hears something in his bedroom. He walks over there. Lo and behold, it's Candy. He like, bitch, what you doing here? I'm out the hospital. You know, I'm feeling good now. She like every dark day of or every dark night of your days, I will be here. So whenever you ready to end it all, baby, I will be here to help you. She's like an angel of death. She says she's gonna be there to haunt him. 
that's fucked up, pray tell. I don't want Candy haunting me. But he tells her, look here, it's not my time, baby. You can come every night you want to, but I'm going to let your ass know every night it is not my time. And that's where the episode ended right there, y'all. The episode was good. Was it watchworthy? Absolutely. Every episode of Pose is watchworthy to me, even the sad ones. I love this episode. If you love cabarets, you will love this episode of Pose. Let me know what y'all thought about this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see y'all in the next review. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala!